Now, in conflicts from the Middle East to Ukraine, the proliferation of drones has reshaped how modern wars are being fought. Militaries around the world are scrambling to find a response to the threat of cheap and deadly drone swarms. Many have set their sights on laser weapons as a potential answer. Ukraine's capital under drone bombardment. Israel under missile and drone attack from Iran. Even Poland, a NATO member country, has seen multiple Russian drones violate its airspace. Cheap and plentiful drones are increasingly hard to combat. Traditional air defense systems like the U.S.-made Patriot were engineered to take down big threats like cruise missiles. They're expensive and hard to replace. Ukraine has scrambled F-16 fighters to chase down attack drones and even put old propeller planes into use. The drones often fly in swarms that include even cheaper unarmed decoy drones that must also be shot down. For years, militaries have experimented with laser systems to knock down airborne threats. Now Israel says it has successfully tested a high-powered laser that can target drones and destroy them with high-energy bursts. It says its so-called iron beam lasers will go into use later this year against drones as well as rockets, mortars and aircraft. Laser systems have many advantages over conventional air defense setups. Intercepting a drone with lasers can cost between $1 and $5, while rocket interceptors start at $50,000 each. The systems are much cheaper than a Patriot battery, which can cost a billion dollars and takes years to produce. The disadvantages of lasers include poor performance in rainy or stormy weather and limited range compared to conventional systems. It's not just Israel. An Australian company says it has sold a system to an unnamed NATO member country. Meanwhile, the European Union's defense agency and Ukraine have also been developing laser weapons. And China displayed its LY-1 laser system at its 2025 military parade. The system is already in use by its navy. So far, all these laser systems are for defensive use, as the drone arms race ramps up the need for protection against assaults from the air. Now let's uh, talk to Justin Bronk. He's a senior research fellow for Air Power Military Technology at the Royal United Service Institute in London. Now, the uh, rise of drones is creating lots of problems for both military forces and civil aviation safety. Can you give us a sense of how they're changing the way we have to think about air defense? So primarily what they are doing is uh, introducing significant mass that is not necessarily what, what Western militaries or indeed Ukraine at the moment are worried about causing the most damage. Most of these drone systems have relatively light warheads um, compared to something like a cruise missile or a ballistic missile. But because you face potentially hundreds uh, at a time, they saturate traditional defense systems and are not really economical, as, as your package has explained, not really economical to intercept with traditional air-to-air -air or, or surface-to-air missiles. Uh, so it's really a, a question of saturation. Um, and to a degree, it's difficult to do the kind of sift and sort from a command and control and, a, and an engagement point of view. So picking out, let's say, cruise missiles within an attack that has several hundred um, either one-way attack drones or, or decoy drones with it is obviously much harder than just the cruise missiles. Now, uh, drones are cheap and often deployed in large numbers, as we've heard, so there's a clear need for affordable countermeasures. You think that uh, going further with laser-based systems is the best solution? For certain scenarios, absolutely. Uh, I think the key thing to bear in mind with laser systems is that they work best um, for defending either fixed locations, so things like air bases, uh, certainly for, for frontier areas. Um, for example, if you were looking at Polish or Romanian requirements alongside the, the border with Ukraine for shooting down UAVs, likewise the Baltic states or Poland, um, then if you have fixed locations where you can set up your capacitor banks, your power generation, your cooling, um, then they're very, very efficient. Equally, if you have something that's mobile but has a huge amount of power and cooling capacity like a, a warship, then that's great. For more kind of tactical um, mobile applications, it's a bit more complicated. You, there are laser systems that can be put on something like a, a JLTV or a, so a 
a sort of light um, armed uh, vehicle for, for army use. But those systems tend to have pretty limited capacity in terms of uh, power output and numbers of shots before they need to be either recharged or connected to generators, which use fuel and take time and, and leave you fixed. So yeah, for, for some things, um, they're potentially very, very useful as a, as a sort of line of defense, um, but they're certainly not the whole solution. And for uh, applications on the front lines, um, they're a bit more complicated, not least because as well as the power and, and sort of mobility limitations, because these uh, systems, laser systems are inherently based on lenses and are quite sensitive, um, they tend to be a bit more vulnerable to being damaged or misaligned and things like that by nearby artillery blasts, um, damage by shell fragments than a traditional thing like a Gepard, i.e. A, a sort of radar guided anti-aircraft gun, um, which is pretty resilient. Mm. Uh, very briefly, if you can, uh, so far systems have been developed mainly for defence. Could they also be used as offensive weapons? Potentially, but the limitation is particularly because laser weapons are by definition line of sight weapons. You, you have to have a straight line of sight to the target. Um, a lot of the kind of offensive tasks that we, we're looking at uh, requirements for uh, in this sort of revitalized world of, of kind of great power threats need greater range than lasers can offer. And if you look at um, previous programs such as the Airborne Laser, which was um, uh, an anti-ballistic missile defense idea that the US tested decades ago on, a, mm. on an adapted 747 jumbo jet, you're looking typically at, at chemical lasers and very large expensive ones to get the kind of power output required over distance in a mobile platform. Mm. So they're probably better suited for defensive use than offensive for the foreseeable future. Justin Bronk there from the Royal United Services Institute. Thank you very much. Well, Sasha Bruchmann is a research fellow for defence and military analysis at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, joining us from Bahrain. Sasha, good to see you. We just heard that uh, shooting down cheap drones can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars using traditional military systems. Can you give us a sense of why it's so hard and so expensive to defend against them? Um, thanks for having me on. Well, you mentioned the first part. Uh, you said $50,000. That That is a common estimate for the Tamir interceptor, for example, for the Iron Dome system. Um, and that interceptor missile, you're ba basically trying to hit a, a flying object with several hundred kilometers per hour, or even, even supersonic, with something that you fire from the ground. So you need an extremely um, good guidance systems. You need a proximity fuse. You need all of that networked and integrated with a radar so that that radar finds the object, let's say a missile, a Kassam missile fired out of Gaza, right? That's been built from a, from a water pipe with fertilizer and sugar. Um, so from low cost objects that only needs to go out and hit something. Um, now, meanwhile, you have to defend against that very object mid, mid flight. So yes, um, from rocket fuel to especially the guidance system, the networking with between the radar and the missile, all of these high tech components cost a lot of money. And, mm -hmm. and that $50,000 is probably more of a lower estimate. Um, so right. the just the dynamic between the missile that attacks you and the missile that defends is is invariably linked, um, and mm. the attacker has the advantage. So cost is is really important. One Patriot system we we heard in that piece would cost about a billion dollars. What do we know? Will a single laser anti drone system cost by comparison? Then. So it's a bit of an of a complex question to answer. The Problem with laser weapon systems, they've been, we've dreamed about these since, since the Star Wars initiative from the 80s under, under President Reagan. And until now, none of the systems has really come to fruition. We've tested several versions um, throughout the decades. The, the Americans had an airborne laser, but they, I think the project was, was stopped in 2002. Billions and billions and billions and billions every year were invested in, the, in, in just ripening the technology. We need certain technological breakthroughs. Um, to now come to this, what they now say, a solid state fiber optic lasers, combined um, fiber lasers. So um, if you put the so headline on the internet. upfront cost, that is, is one of the pieces, sorry. Right, no, I was just gonna say that the, the, the idea of it, uh, that lasers will be used to fight Putin's drones, it's a headline that might light up the internet, but is it a real world option? Has anyone seen this in operation? I mean, how much of a game changer are these systems going to be in reality, Sasha? 
it, it is a real world option that is slowly maturing. There's a lot of hype and then there's cynicism over the last 20, 25 years due to the delays. And between that, I think we've seen a steady technological progress. The Israelis have said um, that they have tested Iron Beam against Hezbollah drones throughout the year. Um, and there have been several other countries that have tested systems. The Americans had one, a 50 kilowatt laser on a, on what they call a striker vehicle that was tested sometime in 2024. Other countries, Germany, the UK, um, uh, Italy, Japan, even Turkey and the UAE, are all developing their own projects. And they all have videos to show a laser destroying a drone. Um, and these, these intercept costs of one to five to $10 are all part of the equation billions up front, tens of millions to build a system. But the other question that you need to have in mind is these systems are highly sophisticated, right? This is physics, this is uh, quantum physics, there's, there's photons involved, there's optronics involved. So you need technicians that can help you maintain these systems. And that has been one of the big problems to get all of these things into, um, into a rugged um, version that you can put on a truck, on a trailer, on an armored vehicle, because if you have lasers that have to be adjusted by, by micro or um, by nanometers or micrometers, and then you want to roll them out on an armored vehicle into a battlefield and something is not adjusted, you need the right people to um, either maintain this stuff or build systems that are uh, rugged and, and resilient enough to withstand this. And that's where the costs lay. Right. Sasha, we'll leave it there. Sasha Bruckman, Research Fellow for Defence and Military Analysis at the International Institute for Strategic Studies. Thanks so much. Thank you.